in my life, when God has called me to do things, one of the things that I... Have you ever noticed when God called... You know the evidence of being called? You know what it is? When your past shows up. That's is right. an indication yes. that your future is around the corner. Because your past never shows up until you're about to be promoted. Because your past is the only thing that can be used to hold you back. So if your whole past is showed up this week to hold you, I can guarantee you, you just need to go on and do it because your past is here to propel you into your future. All right. Uh, I'm really excited about this word. In, in Exodus chapter 4, before we read, let me kind of set up the scenario. We have a guy by the name of Moses who is on the backside of a desert in Midian. And he's shepherding a flock that doesn't even belong to him. Okay, he's shepherding a flock that belongs to his father-in-law. So he's really, here's Moses who escaped execution, floated down the Nile. Okay, I didn't say denial, denial. Floated down the Nile, was plucked out. Now you know only God could put a Jewish baby that's supposed to be dead into a basket in the water. You don't seek and you arrive up at the destination. See, Moses thought, or Moses' mother as she watched him being plucked by Pharaoh's daughter out of the Nile, thought that this was his position or was his destiny, but little did she know that his destiny would start a long time down the road. So here we have Moses plucked out of the Nile, put into Pharaoh's house, adopted into the lineage of Pharaoh, becoming a ruler, a person who has reigned, a person who is a good warrior, a person who has all the best education, and all of a sudden we jump into Moses' life and it ain't going real good. Okay, it, 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 it. You got to admit, from where he has been to where he is, doesn't look real good, does it? Okay, but all of a sudden we see Moses talking to a crackling bush. You know that bush that crackles you? Yeah, I grew up in the country. I know what a fire sounds like <laughs> when things are crackling and burning. But it's being burnt, but not burnt up. Isn't it amazing when God speaks to you, He sets you on fire, but it never allows you to be burnt up. Right, right. See, you might think you're burnt out, but really what's happening is you're being energized to move on. And so we see Moses talking to a bush, and this is, you know, this is not really the height of his life based on his past. And I just stopped by to tell you that where you are, you might think, based on where I have been, I'm really at the lowest place. But can I tell you, it's at the place you think is the lowest that God considers to be the highest. Uh, 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 are you hearing me? All right, let's jump in here. Verse 1, chapter 4. Just do it because it's already handled. Okay? You ain't got to worry. But Moses protested again. See, have you ever been to the place where God tells you to do something and you argue with Him? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I, I argued with Him this last week. You know, I argued this last week with Him. And, and, and Moses is not only arguing, but he's negotiating. Okay, he's negotiating. So can I tell you, uh, uh, if you've been arguing and negotiating with God, don't feel bad. Don't feel bad. Because if you're at the arguing and negotiating point, it's a pretty good indication that you are at the promotion point. All right, y'all yeah, don't get it yet, but you will. What if they don't believe me or listen to me? What if they say the Lord never appeared to you? What if, what, anybody been in the what if? What if they don't like me? What if they don't accept me? Did you know that a lot of dreams have been lost and destroyed in what if? What if I don't do it right? 
What if I don't sing right? What if I don't speak right? What if I don't preach right? What if I don't dress right? What? See, a lot of y'all are losing sleep at night because of the because of the what if? What if in the morning I still have the same problem? What if I don't sleep good tonight? What? See, it's in the what if that you lose the just do it motivation. And so Moses is looking not only at the present and the future, but he's past is caught up with him. You're asking me to do something, but uh, what if they remember me? You know I'm a murderer. Uh, You know uh, Pharaoh has been chasing me down, so what if? What if the place you send me back to is the place I'm not supposed to go to? What if when I get there, I don't have the right words to say? What if when I get up to speak to the people, they don't believe me? Dreams are lost in the what if. But I came here today to dispel the what ifs and let you know that the what if is an indication that you're on the brink of promotion. When you're asking what if something happens, you're on the brink of finding out what it is you're supposed to do and how you're supposed to go about doing it. Because when you say what if, it's an indication that God is about to instruct you. You know he's been to your future before you ever got there. He, you know he knew you was going to say what if. You know that he knew that he was going to have to have an answer because you was always going to what if. Right. right. Come on. I don't know if I can get through this. Hey, then the Lord asked him, what is that in your hand? Come on. Yes. A shepherd's snuff. Moses replied, throw it down on the ground. The Lord took him. So Moses threw down the staff and it turned into a snake. And the Bible says that Moses ran from it. You know, most of us are running from the very thing that's in our hand. Right. All right, we'll get to that in a minute. Then the Lord told him, Moses, what you running from? No, I know he don't say that. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. But you know the indication was. Right. How come you run it yeah. from the very provision that I give you? Uh-huh. How come you run it from the very thing that I have put for you to encourage you to do? Uh-huh. How come you're running from the very thing that's going to promote you? Right. So he said, Moses, how come you run it? Uh-huh. Reach out. And grab that thing you running from. Yeah. Come on. Grab it by the tail. Yeah. Now, any, yeah. anybody ever watch people catching snakes? Yeah. The last thing you're going to do, first of all, if I see a snake, I don't care what it is, I'm running. <laughs> <laughs> to me, there ain't no good snake. That's right. I'm just here to tell you. But I can tell you this, the last thing you're going to find me doing is picking up a snake by the tail. Ain't that just like God? He'll always ask you to do what is out of the norm. That's right. He'll, he'll always ask you to do something that everybody else told you you should have done it another way. Right. You know why? Because God is about doing things in ways that you can't comprehend. See, you're trying to figure it out and work it out, but in reality, God's trying to get you to understand, I don't do things the way you think I do things. I don't do things even the way people have told you. You do know that if you're called to do something, you are what I call an OG. You are an original. So what you are called to do isn't exactly like somebody else in the past used to do it. So he's going to ask you to reach down and pick that thing up by the tail. Don't be grabbing it the way people tell you to grab it, but get it the way I tell you to get it. Uh, Because the blessing is in my instruction, not in what you have been instructed. Right. Uh, All right. So Moses reached out and grabbed it, and it turned back into 
the shepherd's staff in his hand. Perform this sign, the Lord told him. Then they will believe that the Lord, the God of their ancestors, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, really has appeared to me. <clears throat> Maybe I should just shout when I say that. That I've got it all for myself. He said, I'll forget that back on again. This is kind of like the air conditioning. It's, it's on. Off and on and off. All right. Okay. So let's get back to this. So let's take a second. And can I tell you that when I, re I have read this passage a lot of times, but I didn't read it with the comprehension So the, the one of the things that I looked at when I began to read this passage was I thought that Moses was the central character. Anybody read that passage and think it's all about Moses? But if you really read the passage, it's not about Moses at all. It's about the staff. See, can I tell you that your call has never been about you. It's been about what you can See, so when you get ready to do what God asks you to do, you need to stop thinking about you because it's not about you. It's about the instruction on the inside of you. And so when I began to read this, I have read it in the past thinking that Moses was a central character. But in reality, it's not about Moses. It's about the staff. It's about the staff. Now, this staff is, number one, it's a staff that he's been using to look after sheep. So it's become an instrument of protection, an instrument of guidance. It's become an instrument that kept the sheep where they're supposed to be. It become an instrument to keep the wolves away from the sheep. And so that's one thing that he has learned that this staff is. But this staff is a lot more than that. This staff that he holds in his hand at this very moment is a reminder of 40 years ago of something that he did in his past. And that's the reason, because of the staff, he's holding something that he's presently doing. But in the holding of that, it's a reminder of who he used to be and what he has become. Uh, are you hearing me? And so the staff is something that reminds him of what he used to be at one time. And so the staff not only keeps him in the present, but it reminds him of his past. Of he used to be this and used to be that. And now he's just a shepherd with a staff. Where he used to rule with a scepter and a sword, now he's ruling with a staff. See, it's always been about what's in your hand that makes a difference. It's what you see. Everything that you need is already in your hand. Right. When I get done today, I want you to be encouraged 
to understand that the answer to your problem is within your reach. It's not something you need to chase down. It's not something you need to chase after. It's something that all you have to do is reach out and get it. Because God's never going to leave you in a position that you need to run down something or chase after something. He's already known everything that's going to happen in your life. So all of your provisions for your current problem is within reach. Are you hearing me? And so the staff is not only that, but this is the same staff, if you remember, that Moses used to part the Red Sea. Uh, uh, are you getting it? Are you hearing now that the main character in verses 1 through 5 ain't got nothing to do with Moses? It's, it's got all to do with Moses. I know you're complaining. Moses, I know you're negotiating. But what I'm trying to teach you is all that you need is in your hand. All that you need is within reach. You're trying to ask me the what is. And I've already provided all the answers to the what is. It's, in, it's within your reach. It's actually in your hand. This is the same step that struck the Nile River and turned it into blood. It wasn't Moses, it was the staff. This is the same, same staff that struck the dirt and gnats appeared in Egypt. It wasn't Moses, it was the staff. And Moses, what if they, what if they don't accept me? What? And God told them, Moses, everything you need is already in your hand. I'm trying to get you to understand that what you need, let me tell you, a lot of you are asking God for things that God has already placed within your hand. The problem is nobody ever taught you that everything that you need is within your reach. Every provision for your problem is already in your hand. You just have to recognize that you got to let go of the what is and just do it because God has already handled it for you. See, the enemy wants you to believe that you got to chase down God for your provision and God has chased you down before you got here and provided everything that you needed before you ever showed up. And I just come here to tell you today that everything that you're going to need for the entirety of your life, everything that you're going to need for what God has called you to do is in your hand. It's already at your reach. And the reason you can't get it is all you can say is what if? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What if it don't work out? Go forward. What if it doesn't happen the way I think it should happen? Just go forward. What if they don't like the way I look? Just go for it. Why? Because he already went for it before you showed up in it. And he already prepared the way for you. So you just need to learn. I don't need to question so much. I just need to understand that everything I'm going If you think you are called to start a business and it's really, go for it. Just do it because it's all, well, what if it don't work out? What if? Well, if you live on what if, you are never going to find the realization of the reality of God in your life. If all, the problem we have in the church is ain't nobody. You do know the Bible says the wealth of the righteous is stored up in the house of the wicked. Why is it? They go for it. They don't know how to negotiate with God. See, we all what? Well, what if it don't work out? Well, if you're supposed to have it, baby, it'll work out. But if you stay in the what if, you ain't never going to find out. You just got to learn, Moses, to go for it. This is the same staff that struck the rock in the desert and brought water out. The same staff. Come on now. The same staff that Moses ran from. The same provision that scared Moses. And, and the same thing that God tried to say, Moses, you're asking me what if. And the answer to what if is in your hand. I'm trying to get you to see if you put it down, it becomes a snake. If you pick it up, it becomes miraculous. If you lay this thing down, it will scare you to death. 
and eventually slither away from you. But if you reach down and you pick it up by the tail, you will understand that I have already provided for all of the what is that you can bring to me. Are you hearing me? It's everything that you need is already within your reach. You see, this conversation that we're seeing is from a, a man who has been for the last 40 years running from something that he did. How many of you know that you can do the right thing at the wrong time and it don't look good when you do it? Uh, are you here? How many of y'all have done the right thing at the wrong time? Amen. And somehow it didn't turn out the way that you thought it was supposed to turn out. But can I tell you this? When you did the right thing at the wrong time and it didn't turn out right, it was just nothing more than God setting you up for your future. Come on. Uh, Moses was not ready when he was in the palace to liberate the people. You do know, you do know that God knew that Moses was going to kill somebody. Now I'm not telling you it's okay to kill somebody. Okay? But you, but God knew that Moses was going to need something to propel him into the future. So Moses does a good thing at the wrong time. It don't look like it's good, but in reality it's a setup. It's a setup for his future, a setup for his destiny. And so here he is on the backside of the desert, far away from everybody else, not close to the palace, don't even believe in himself, don't even believe in the people that he, he you know he told God, you do know I killed somebody for them folks that you want me to go back and rescue. And you do know, what if they waited for me? What if? What if they remember when I get back what I did? What if? See, Moses' negotiation with God ain't got nothing to do with his call. It's got to do with his past. It's got to do with his past. Do you know that every time you get ready to get promoted, something in your past will sneak into your present? Right. Are you hearing me? Can I tell you that if your past has snuck into your present, it's an indication of your future? Come on now. Come on. Uh, oh, see, y'all don't want to hear that. See, nobody wants to teach this. Because everybody wants to see it. Your past is your past, and it has no control over your future. But your past has an indication of your future. Right. Oh, oh, Lord. Lord. Uh, I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm just, I'm just, uh, I'm just trying to tell you. So, Moses negotiates with God. But can I tell you? If you go on and read, and I'm not going to read the whole thing, but if you go on and read, you will find out that everybody that was alive in a position of authority and responsibility yeah. since Moses left are all dead. You know why? Because God said, just do it because I already handled it. Come on. But all, all of your what ifs I handled already. You, 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 all you're worried about is your past, and I already handled your past for your future. Okay? So I just want to tell you, whatever God calls you to do, your past will raise its head, trying to keep you from moving to your future. But understand, when it shows up, put your arm around it and say, Hey! I sure am glad you came today because this is an indication that I'm going forward and not going backward. Because if I know anything about God, He's going to show me that He handled my past before I get to my future. And that's an indication of my promotion that I can go ahead and do it because God already handled it. See, most of us live in our past with all the what ifs. You don't ever get to where you're supposed to be because you're allowing the what ifs of your past give me an indication of your destiny and your future. But I stop by here to tell you on this morning, on this very hot day on the inside, that God already handled your future in your past. And he just stopped off to tell you, would you stop what if been? And would you stop complaining? And would you stop negotiating? And just go ahead and do it because I already handled it. Amen. 
Amen. Yeah. Yeah. The problem in the church is we're afraid of doing because what if it don't turn out? Right. Right. What if it don't work out? Well, can I tell you, God has already handled your future, even in your past. Come on. Your future was settled when you was on crack. Your future was settled when you couldn't stay faithful. Amen. Uh, maybe I'm speaking to the wrong group. My future was settled when I was running from the staff. My future was settled when I thought this can never happen. I did, I'm just an old country boy. There ain't no way this can work out for me. What if I get up to try and it just don't work out? You know I come from a background uh, 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 of where I don't know the difference in races. What if I show up and it don't work out for me? What if the way I talk don't work out for me? What if the way I was raised don't work out for me? What if they don't like it? And God said, I already was in your past and handled your future. And if you would get rid of the what is, then you could see your destiny. I don't know about you, but I'm looking at a lot of what ifs. And the what if, what if, Pastor Fred, you would have been born white? You did not get to choose. You didn't get to choose. Sometimes I have to look in the mirror to figure out am I black or white. But I didn't get to choose. And so I'm not going to spend all of my life saying, well, what if? Amen. Well, you have called me to a multicultural, multi-believing, multi-racial. And what if they don't accept me? And God took me back to my childhood and said, can you not see that your qualification came in your past? Yeah. Although it looks like it might not help your future, yeah. but I let you go through what you went through yeah. Yeah. because you were going to need it for your promotion. So I already handled it, yeah. so just go and do it. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm just trying to encourage you that God, whatever you call to do, just do it because God already handled it. Stop worrying about qualifications and non qualifications because if you were called, maybe just go on and do it. If you're supposed to be an entrepreneur, yeah. money will chase you down. Why? Yeah. Right? Because God already handled it. Already if, you, well, if you're supposed to be in the ministry, baby, I don't care if you can't speak a word. I don't care if you can't quote a scripture. Get out there and go and do it. Because God already handled it. Well, I'm not qualified. What if they don't like it? What if I didn't go to Bible school? What if it's going to kill your dream? Yeah. What if? So today, put, a, put away the list of what you don't have and look at what you have in your hand. Most of us spend our time focusing on what I don't have. Well, God, you know you called me to do this, but what if? What if? Well, you know this requires Bible college, so what if? You know this is going to require. Did you know in my lifetime, now I'm just going to be transparent. In my lifetime, I have gotten more things in my life not being qualified for. There are things that have happened to me that I am so blessed that there's no way in the world if I had what if all of my life, it could have ever happened to me. What if? They don't let me go. Can I tell you, I have invitations to go preach in places that have four and five and six and 10,000 people. Can you imagine, and they're waiting on me to say I'll go. Can you imagine if I spent my life with what if? What, I'm not qualified. Really? really? No, all the things that I need are at my reach. All of the, I'll just need to reach down and pick it up because it's already there. So everything that you need is already there. Let me tell you a little story. A while back, I won't 
call any names. But a while back, I had someone come to me that was in the healing ministry and ask me some questions about things. Well, I have a book. I had a book that was written by one of the greatest healing ministries of all time. And I took the book, which is about that big, and I gave it to the person. I said, read this book. It's an instruction manual for what you think you're called to do. Read the book. Oh, about two and a half or three months later, the person came back to me and asked me another question. And my answer was, did you read the book? No, I'm not going to answer your question because the provision for your question I put in your hand. Did you read the book? See, this is what happens to us a lot of times in our life. We're asking God questions about things and asking God questions about our life and asking God uh, questions about provisions and callings and needs. And he says, did you read the book? The book. Everything that you need, I put at your reach. Everything that you need, I put in your hand. Did you read the book? If you read the book, you would have read, I will never leave you nor forsake you. If you had read the book, you would understand my ways are not your ways. If you had read the book, you wouldn't have so many what ifs. Because you would know that the steps of a righteous person are ordered by the Lord. If you had read the book. See, everything that you need to know is at your disposal. It's in your hand. And it's already been handled. If you read the book, you won't worry about what's happening in the world. I read the book and we win. Uh, are you hearing me? You won't worry about turmoil on the earth. I read the book and it says that I will rule and reign for a thousand years. Just like when Adam was in the garden. I read the book. So I don't have a lot of what ifs. What if Trump continues to be the way he is. I don't need the what if. I already know what's going to happen. I'm not worried about tomorrow. I don't care about CNN. I don't care about Fox News. I don't have any what if it don't work out. What if Trump don't make it? What if Hillary's in there? I don't worry about any what ifs because I've already know that God has told me, just do it. I've already handled it. Stop worrying about what if it don't work and just Come on. A lot of dreams in here are unfulfilled because everybody lives in the what if. When in reality, you should just do it. You could accomplish a lot more things in your life if you would adopt the attitude of just do it. God has already handled it. You see, our relationship with Christ does not take situations out of my life, but it teaches me how to handle them. See, it's really not what you have that matters. It's how you handle it. See, God handles things in different ways. Master, there are a lot of people and it's dinner time. Should we send them away for provisions? No. There's a little boy out there with a McDonald's meal pack. <laughs> Get it. I already handled it when I knew they were going to be here. <laughs> the greatest thing you will normally ever fear is death. 
And God handled death with death. Why? Because he's already handled it. And he handles in a way that you don't understand. See, it doesn't make any difference if you have money or have no money. It's all in the way of how you handle what you have. God was trying to say to Moses, the answer to all your what ifs is how you handle what I put in your hands. Because I've already provided everything you need, but the answer is not in the provision. The answer is in how will you handle it. If you handle it appropriately, Moses, it will cause 2.7 million people who have been in slavery for over 350 years. If you will handle the provision correctly, it will cause them to be released. It will change the mind of Pharaoh. I don't have to strike nobody. I don't have to run through the camp. I've already put the what if in your hand. If you will handle it correctly, it will deliver my people from bondage to the promised land. I really don't need you, Moses, because I really need the staff, but somebody has to handle it appropriately. So before you get so caught up in you, it's what you have been given that's important. And it's how you handle it yes. that determines what happens. You can have a million dollars or you can have one dollar. It doesn't make any difference. It's all in how you handle it. Philippians 4.13. I love this verse. It's on everything that all of my family has. I put it on everything. I put it on football helmets. I put it on baseball gloves. I put it on hats. I put it on. I, I can do all things. Through who? I can't do nothing through me. That's right. But I can do all things through Christ. How can I do all things through Christ? Because it's already been handled. I can't do. What hasn't been taken care of. But I can do everything that has been handled for me. Can I tell you that everything that you're going to go through, is that you're going to go through stuff, but you have to understand that what you're going through has already been handled, and the outcome depends on how you handle what God has put before you to take you to the place you need to go to. Oh, are you hearing me? It doesn't make any difference if you have a great anointing or no anointing. It just depends on how you handle the call. Now, before we close, let's go back to verse 3. Why was Moses afraid of the snake and he ran? Because now Moses is on the backside of the desert. Do you think he ain't never seen a snake before? He's seen snakes. How many of y'all have seen snakes? Yeah, I mean, yeah, I grew up in the country, man. I, I swam with snakes. Just learn to handle it properly. You know, if you see one, don't splash around. Don't get any attention. But you see, Moses took something that he was familiar with, and he was used to handling it based on where he was. When he put it down, it changed. That was an indication that how he used to use it was not going to be how he will use it when he picks. See, some of y'all have laid some things down in your life and ran away from it. The indication is this. 
that when you ran from it because you were scared of it, is because it's about to transform into your future. And what you laid down and ran from has been transformed into the very thing that's going to take you into your destiny. So when you go back to pick the thing up that you ran from, it will have more power and more durability than it had when it... I'm talking to somebody that gave up somewhere, laid something, well, you know, my first marriage, it was so bad, it was so terrible, it was just, it scared me to death. Can I tell you that when you reach down to pick that thing back up, it's going to have a different power than when you laid it down the first time, because it's still... Can I tell you, you don't want to know the secret to a good marriage? Now this is going to blow your mind. But I've been married a while. You can be married to the prettiest woman. You can be married to the ugliest woman. You can be married to the skinniest woman. You can... And that refers to you two guys. You can be married to the fattest person. The success in your marriage... It's not based on the person. Right. It's based on how you handle it. Right. Right. It, anybody ever see? I've seen some knockdown, gorgeous girls with some ugly dudes. Right. Right. And I'm like, really? Are you kidding me? But you can I tell you, he has figured out how to handle it. Right. Right. He don't know he's ugly. She don't know he's ugly. Because he's handling that relationship the right way. Are you hearing me? So the secret to your marriage isn't who you marry to. It's how you handle what God gave you. And if you handle it wrong, it won't work. If you handle it right, it'll work forever. It's all in Moses. Everything you need is within your reach. Just do it and handle it correctly and it will do everything that you're complaining about. He won't, Moses, you won't need any faith. The staff will do it all if you handle it correctly. You can't part no see Moses. You ain't even got enough faith to believe this is me talking in a bush. But if you'll handle that staff right, it'll part the sea. If you'll handle that staff right, it'll cause the river to turn to blood. If you'll handle that staff right, it'll cause the gnats to come out of the dust. If you'll handle that staff right, it'll part the Red Sea. If you will handle that staff right, it'll cause my people to be victorious in battle. If you'll handle that staff right, even when everybody complains, that staff will make the rock give up some water so that y'all can stay alive. It's all in how you handle it. Because God has already handled it. You just have to go to it. You see, it's not what they say about you that will determine what God will do with you. Right. You just have to take the thing by the tail. You know your pain became your promotion yeah. when you decided to take that pain by the tail. You're never going to go anywhere in your life without trials and tribulations. Can I tell you that the only promise that was given you was that you will have trials and tribulations. We try to preach folks into believing if you can only have just enough faith you won't have no troubles. If you could just have enough word. Can I tell you I've got a lot of work but I have some trials and tribulations. And can I tell you, it's not the trial and tribulation that makes the difference. It's how do I handle the trial and the tribulation. 
How do I learn to turn my pain into my promotion? How do I turn, learn to turn my discouragement into my destiny? It's how I handle my situation that determines my future. And the one thing that I have come to realize in my life is God has already been at the end of my life. He already knows all the days of my life. He already knows that not a hair falls from your head, that he's not aware of it. And so if he's been in my future, he knows my present. And he's not going to allow anything to come into my life that he's not already provided an escape for me. It just depends on how I handle the situation. I just need to learn to do what I've been instructed to do because God has already handled my instruction. Yes. Just do it. Just do it. He's already handled. He's already handled. The leaders looked for the king to be born in the palace. They searched high and low only to find that God had already handled it. Born in a manger. Born in a manger. Given to a virgin. See, God doesn't handle things the way you expect Him to handle them. So I just came by today to encourage you that Walk in your instruction and don't worry about how it looks because God is never going to do it the way you think He's going to do it because if He did, you wouldn't do it. Just do it. Don't worry about what if. They're already handled. Don't worry about the difficulties it's already been handled it's already isn't it amazing that the king of all kings didn't even have a place to be buried why because it wasn't a burial anyway it was a resurrection he didn't need a permanent place. He wasn't going to be there long enough. Oh, see, we wouldn't. The church back then, they didn't expect him to be how he was. This can't be the Messiah. This cannot be the one we have been anticipating. He's a troublemaker and a rebel rouser. But this can, this is not the king that we're waiting for. Why? Because God doesn't do it the way we expect it to be done. So let me encourage you. Whatever you're going through, God has already handled it. Amen. Are you here? Stand to your feet. God has already handled it. When you stand up, I want you to touch somebody next to you. Look them straight in the eye and say, God's got it handled. Come on now. You shout it to him. You need to tell somebody, God's got it handled. <laughs> You might not look the way I might not look the way you think I should, but God's got it handled. I might not sound the way you think I should, but God's got it handled. And what you're looking at today will not be what you see the next time you see me. Because God's got it handled. I might be going through right now, but I won't be going through this the next time you see me. Because God's got a handle. Go across the aisle, join hands with somebody. Everybody come on. I don't care if you gotta walk or what you gotta do. Everybody, 
everybody you're holding hands with is going through something. Ain't nobody in here not going through something. But can I tell you, where you're going depends on how you handle where you are. And where you are is a teaching moment for your next step. So I just want you while you're holding that hand just to silently say, God's got it handled. It might not look good right now. In fact, it might not look promising. In fact, the doctor's report wasn't real good. But God's got it handled. And I'm just going to go ahead and do it. I'm just going to go ahead and do it. Because there's no way he would call me to do what I'm supposed to do if he didn't already go ahead of me and handle it for me. Because he knows I wouldn't go if I knew how he was going to do it. So I'm expecting him to do something that I do not understand. Because that's an indication that it's him. That's an indication that it's him. So just silently where you are. Just say, God's got it. Just do 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 it. Your future is based on how you handle your present. And God's got it. I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. All of your steps are ordered by me. Just stay. Just do it. Just go for it. I'm speaking to some folks today that God has been giving you things in your heart that you should go and do. And all you have been doing for the last six months, seven months, a year is what if? What if? What if? What if it don't work? But can, can I tell you that there's more failures to get to success than there is success? What if? Don't let what if kill your dream. What if? What if? If it don't work out, God still called you. He still purposed you. Can I tell you, the biggest problem we have in life is failure to believe that a mistake is okay. You're going to get more things wrong than you get right. You just need to know it. And you're never going to get to right until you pass wrong. Because what if? Don't let what if kill your dream. I'm telling you, we need to see businesses in this building. We need to see anointings in this building. We need to see prophecy in this building. We need to see mentoring in this building. We need to see mothering in this building. But a lot of y'all are called to do those things. But all you can say is, what if? And I come to tell you, just do it. God's got it handled. Father, thank you. Thank you that even though Moses tried to negotiate, he finally found out it wasn't about him at all. It was really all about how he handled what you put within his reach. And because he dared to reach, we now operate in grace. Because Moses reached even in the middle of what if. And he handled it appropriately. Help us to know that everything that we need is within our reach. All we have to do is handle it according to your desires. Bless us as we leave this place. Bless each and every person who is here. Cause them to be encouraged that a what if is an indication of a promise. Just because we question doesn't mean it won't happen. It's an indication that there 
destiny is stirring on the inside of you. But we have to reach out to what is available and handle it according to your will. Take care of us as we leave this place. Bring us back to this place safe and sound. Cause us to take this message outside of this wall and encourage others to just do it because God has already handled it in Jesus' name. Thank you. Somebody put your hands together.